I read Kant's excerpts from Kant in philosophy classes in college and I saw no difference between what other people said Kant was saying and what the objectivists say Kant is saying. Zorio here explains again and again in the exact same words the objectivists do well Zorio has a big problem with my words and he doesn't like the way objectivists phrase it but the when, when he says it in words he's comfortable with it's the same thing I can take it and in one term translate it over into what the objectivists say about it they are saying the same thing about Immanuel Kant that the objectivists are saying objectivists don't misrepresent Kant objectivists represent him objectively that's what scares the hell out of the academics which they're not no one that you ever cite is citing anyone else fairly. No one I ever cite is citing anyone else fairly. He knows this about all the objectivist writings. Now, you may know that he's never read any objectivist writings. He says this in a couple videos. All right, let's see what else he What is that? How is he going to get on here and criticize me for just blabbing about what other people say, and then he's going to say that all of my sources are invalid when he doesn't know jack shit about objectivism? Zorio, you're a pinhead. Explanation. And, and I don't mean to be rude about that, to call him a pinhead. I do sort of mean to be rude. But everyone needs to know, I don't take this lightly. I don't think this is funny. Uh, Zorio and men like him uh, have teaching positions. I don't know if Zorio has teaching positions, but men like him have te teaching positions. Men with this sort of mental attitude, who, 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 who won't connect two thoughts to save their life. And, and he postures as a, an educated, informed person. And the people who built the gas chambers in Nazi Germany had doctorate degrees. Because of the explanations. I mean, the explanations available, you can get it. They don't want an explanation. It's not a fair explanation. Really skeptical. Again, the objectivist explanation of Kant's not fair, he says. We will see in the coming videos here that his statements of what Kant said are almost identical to the statements objectivists make. The objectivists aren't, and, and anybody else who says Kant says something and something about duty, a almost anyone, but maybe the wacky postmodernist, almost any writer on Kant will tell you in some terms the things that Kant says. And they're not hiding it. The thing is, objectivists are coming out and saying that's evil. That's the thing. That's the distinction. Everybody knows that Kant says there's a phenomenal world we know with our senses, a numeral world that we can't know, and that we have to act from duty, which makes itself known by a feeling, which is beyond rationale. Everybody knows all that. It's just that the objectivists are saying that that took over philosophy and is destroying the world. So he's going to restate the stuff I say endlessly, and I'm going to restate it again. And this is the third gurgitation. And we're never going to be any further than we were the first time. We're just still going to know that Kant said you can't know anything. Your mind does not tell you reality. Your mind gives you a delusion. That's where we're going to be at the end of it. They just want to put a question mark in the way every step of the way. So you can never get anywhere. That's how they get their paychecks. I said they want to put a question mark in the way every step of the way. That's how they get their paychecks. I didn't mean Zorio's getting paid to do these videos. What I meant was his method of thinking and talking and, and approaching these subjects comes from academia, which is simply a large edifice to get people paychecks for sitting around and doing useless shit, like talking about Kant from a thousand different angles, none of which are any different. But questioning things is how you learn things. Uh, if you just take any information that people hand down to you, and you never actually think about it, then you don't learn anything. And you're certainly not an individual in that way. If you just take information people hand down to you, and you never think about it, you're not learning anything. Interesting, Zoria. It's not just thinking about it, though. It's integrating and understanding the information. Just thinking about it is fine. That's what academics do. They think about it all frickin' day and never get anywhere. So thinking about it isn't the problem. It's thinking about it rationally, which means integrating it and knowing something about it. Information isn't necessarily knowledge. You have to integrate it and make it part of your context for it to become anything besides just raw data. 
So, I guess you're accusing me of just taking stuff in and not thinking about it. And I guess I'm accusing you of just taking stuff in and not thinking about it. If you would think for a minute about the shit you're learning in the university, you would uh, uh, drop out. Stated it openly, that's what he was trying to do. To save the morality of self-abnegation and self-sacrifice. He knew that it could not... I don't know where you're getting that from because you don't, uh, you don't cite it at all, or you don't say where they're citing it from. Uh, having read the Critique of Practical Reason, uh, I don't know of anywhere in that where he says that. His now here we have the fact that Kant was trying to save the morality of selflessness, of, of self-sacrifice, um, of altruism, although that term hadn't been invented in Kant's time. Kant was trying to save that morality from uh, the onslaught of the Enlightenment. Uh, and Zorio says he's read the Critique of Practical Reason, and he, and he didn't read that anywhere. Kant never says that. But how about that other thing, which Zorio actually reads this other quote. He says, uh, reads a quote from Kant. I have found it necessary to deny knowledge in order to make room for faith. I have found it necessary to deny knowledge in order to make room for faith. Why do we want room for faith in there? Because reason was encroaching on morality. And morality had to be saved or protected. Which morality? The morality of duty, of self-sacrifice. Kant's whole purpose was to preserve this morality, and he found that in order to do that, he had to deny knowledge. Um, that's it right there. That's the statement right there. So Zorio says he doesn't know where this comes from, just because you didn't get it. I, he can't even translate two frickin' sentences. They say the same thing. Okay? Kant says, I had to deny knowledge to make room for faith. And Peikoff says about this, he had to deny reality and reason in order to save the ethics of self-sacrifice and duty. That is an identical statement. So, his uh, ethics are not based on uh, altruism or anything like that. But now, Kant did not fully develop his ethics. His eth ethical theory wasn't developed fully by him. It had to wait a while because he was surrounded by the Enlightenment. And for him to carry out all of the epistemological results of uh, his fancy system into the fields of ethics would have been a really uh, acrobatic feat. It had to wait a few generations, be translated through a few philosophers, and get uh, put down into ways that people should act in a day-to-day -day basis. Kant gave us the categorical imperative and these large things like this. But when it comes down to it, we're talking about uh, Fichte, Marx, and uh, Nietzsche. So that's the ethical translation of Kant. So that's where Kant's ethics eventually had to get put into reality, was through other philosophers. Kant never really got all the way with his ethics. Faith from or I'm guessing you're actually, uh, this is in reference to perhaps the second edition, the Critique of Pure Reason, where uh, Kant says something along the lines of, I've found the need to uh, remove knowledge in favor of faith, or see if I can actually find that. So then he finds it in quotes and lines. I don't have anything so let's see if I can... I'm good enough to spot that. And he still, even after he quotes that line, he still disagrees that Kant was denying reason in order to make room for the ethics of duty and self-sacrifice. Uh, right here. I have therefore found it necessary to deny knowledge in order to make room for faith. Alright. Now, uh, this actually makes complete sense when you've read the Critique of Pure Reason. It makes sense once you've read the Critique of Pure Reason, but you can't make sense of it before that. Those words don't have any meaning unless you read the Critique of Pure Reason, because they're Kant's words, and he has his own subjective reality from which he's speaking. And in order to know more about his reality, you have to read his words. You can't just interpret them from your own reality. Well, Zorio, you frickin' idiot, I can 